Good morning, good morning. Do, 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 do. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to a daily dose of joy. I am here in a little garden park near my house. And I don't know if y'all could hear it, but uh, there are other folks in the garden this morning and somebody's playing some country music and started playing rock me baby like a wagon wheel rock me any day you feel Ooh, baby rock me oh y'all can't hear it now <laughs> they turned it down to the song passed but it reminded me of some funny whoopsie daisy stories that have sort of a country feel or country music feel um, so even in Atlanta, country music is still sometimes considered de rigueur, you know, because Atlanta is quite urban. And um, so growing up here, I was, because I have like sort of one foot in the city and one foot in the country, I like, you know, I like to be in the middle of nowhere, but I also love city life. And um, so <laughs> I remember when I was about 16, and I'm driving down the road and I'm listening to some like a, a pop station on the radio and I'm singing and then it gets to a commercial so I switch it over to country and I mean it was it was like Waylon Jennings or something it was real country and I get up to a red light and this guy that I had a huge crush on pulls up next to me at the red light and he's playing country music too and I was we were both just like woohoo which was not common for Intel life to be woohooing from your cars <laughs> but I did when I realized it was about this whoopsie daisy moment of like uh oh I've been caught you know <laughs> you know 16 you have all sorts of self-consciousness and uh stepping into your own like where you kind of do it in fits and spurts and um and so that was a real like whoopsie daisy that turned into like just a very happy connection <laughs> and so that made me think of another country music whoopsie daisy much later in my life i was two-stepping and uh that's something i took up later it was not around when i i mean it was around but just wasn't something uh, my parents were into disco <laughs> um, and we went to musicals and listened to musicals in the house and sang and danced to those and uh, reenacted Adam Ant music videos from MTV. That was more what I was doing when I was a teenager. But this is in my 20s. I mean, any kind of dance, I'm down. And so a friend uh, was really into two-stepping. And there was actually a country bar in town in Atlanta and we go and it really helped to wear cowboy boots because when you two-step you want that leather bottom that slick you don't want a grippy sole because you want to kind of slide and spin and so I had some cowboy boots I've got quite a collection of those um, <laughs> and I was all excited because I thought I'm gonna be the first time I went I think I just had on like sandals, something I just had on when we spontaneously decided to go. And I realized I had been kind of not able to spin. So um, I get out on the floor and I'm so excited about being able to spin that I kind of, you know, sort of do a little slide move. <laughs> I didn't realize how slick the dance floor was. And not only did I slide, but I slid into two other women in front of me. You know, we were, you were with partners dancing in a circle kind of thing. And I slid through my, past my partner onto the next partner and onto the next one, taking out two other women as I went. And the three of us laid on the, you know, laid there on the dance floor. It was a definite whoopsie daisy moment. And I just, whoo boy, did it make me laugh. <laughs> It was a, uh, what else do you do? Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> At least you know you're out there dancing. And when we take risks and push our growing eggs, go growing eggs, our growing eggs, <laughs> our growing edge, we can be pretty guaranteed to have some whoopsie daisy moments. And it makes the whole learning experience so much more fun. We also learn better when we play and laugh. 
lots of good data on that too. So bring in the laughter, reframe, bring in those whoopsie daisy stories, share them with your friends. We're gonna keep upping that dose chemistry in our brain. We're gonna bump up the baseline and feel free to share my stories, share stories you hear from other friends on the microdosing line and get into that habit of telling stories and engaging your hippocampus and pulling those memories out. I promise, I promise, I promise your brain can't help but change. Let's elevate our baseline of dose chemistry with fun little microdosing tools. And I will be using mine throughout the day. How about you? You know, I'm self-resourced. I can drop into these tools because they're always in my pocket all throughout the day. And kind of probably the minimum I do a day, well the absolute minimum is just one in the morning with you guys. M average is probably three, I would guess. And um, I know a lot of people who use it a lot more, five or six times a day. And there are definitely days where I do it way closer to that. Um, and it also flows into places where I'm telling whoopsie daisies like to a group of friends or laughing really hard with my son, where it's naturally integrated these habits into my day-to-day -day life. And that's what we're going for. All right, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Oh, let's take three gentle breaths to celebrate that we pause to rest and play and use our microdosing tools. Mm. Mm. May today surprise and delight us. Thank you for being here with me. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. Bye.